Hello YouTube. Today will be a rather short video again and uh, I just wanted to make a different intro with my lovely little cat here. And anyway, um, today I will show you of some displays and some products that I made that will be shipped out today. And um, without further ado, we first get to our sponsor pcbway.com this video is sponsored by pcbway.com they offer first class pcb stencil and assembly services they also have 3d printing and cnc services with the worst array of options select the material upload your file and get an instant quote without any delay your orders will be executed in a timely fashion and you can choose your shipping option that suits your schedule pcbway is your one-stop solution that you can trust okay today I just want to show uh, two products that I'm gonna send out and tell you something about that display back there so this is my OLED scope when you turn it on power it's some type C to micro USD uh, you can select a oscilloscope or frequency generator and when you push it in it turns that feature on and here I'm just gonna measure the voltage I'm getting from my USB hub and it goes into the analog end and you see it's 5 volts so that's that I'm just briefly gonna show this because I have made video about it before so and to change to the beginning of the screen you just turn it on and off and then you can select frequency generator push it in and then here you have the pulse width modulation in percentage and the frequency when you push it in you can select the steps to advance or decrease the frequency and here you can also change the percentage so let's go to 100 and then you can go up and down if you hold it it just goes automatically so we have say 1000 hertz and we go in the pulse modulation and the LED is also connected to that so you can if you go down in the percentage you will see that it will get dimmer and when you go up again it gets brighter so that's that this is how it looks like from the front on the back you have the inputs you have analog 2 input and you have digital output and then 5 volt and ground and on the output you can select D2 or D9 and the frequency is on D9 so and uh, this is it and now I'm gonna show you the other product let me pause the video for a second so here is a gear indicator normally I am doing this with the color display but this customer requested a small as possible version and since I had a few of these uh, PCBs they are I have made them in 2017 so five years old but of course they work I mean there's nothing wrong with it they're also in Enic gold immersion so let me show this uh, it is powered by my power supply from the bottom here which is 13 point something volts and uh, it starts up well you have the inputs here and I had it start up in park and then I'm gonna show you each of the screens the customer requested one I have to look from the side it's a little finicky here on the video two three and then he has park reverse neutral 
and drive. So obviously for an automatic transmission. So I am going to ship this out today. This I just made so I had them line up the wires. I will leave him on and he can decide how he's gonna mount it. He's, he said he's gonna mount it in something so he can do that. So anyway, this was the gear indicator. Let me pause the video again to readjust my camera. Well, I accidentally turned the camera off, but doesn't matter as I'm putting these together anyway. So this is a 2.6 inch uh, IPS display with 320 by 240. It's a landscape version and it has a capacitive touchscreen. The touchscreen is not attached yet. Because I'm still figuring out which pins and what not to use. This is a ESP 32S3 development board with the two inputs, which are to be honest a pain in the butt. I rather prefer having just a single so I can upload and then open zero monitor and check right away. So this is a ESP boom board, a little bit older. I first tried it with this and um, let me show you what's going on so right now I have the oops let me do this again I have the backlight connected to my external power supply so this is the test display test from Wadmer. thank you very much by the way for all the great work you're doing and this benchmarks at 300 uh, nanoseconds i think it is and um, i had the same display running on here and the result was 94 nanoseconds so three times faster I don't know why it is. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it was faster with a different library, same test. It was with the Lovian uh, GFX library, which is uh, optimized for speed. And Botmer's library has uh, support for many, many, many displays and it does come at a cost. So, um, but for some strange reason, with my connections here, I cannot get the Lovian library to work so right now I am stuck not stuck but I'll figure it out eventually right now it's working with the Botmo library and I would rather have it three times faster and oh this is by the way connected in 8-bit parallel so if you have this running on SPI this is way slower so anyway, um, I will eventually, because I have not enough pins on the room module, I will use the S3 module in my project or device actually. They are same size. It has obviously more pins on the S3. Not the... Uh, promised or not the uh, 45 GPIOs that you normally get if you probably use the chip by itself but if you use a module you have less but at least more than uh, on the ESP room so about this project I will make more videos in the future uh, right now I'm just testing the uh, various uh, add-ons that I'm gonna add to it and uh, that's why I have it breadboarded because uh, since it's the first time I'm working with the uh, ESP S3 module or dev board, I have to figure out the pins. But uh, this is it, I just wanted to show you. It is really nice display. Now you'll see it much better than that. I still have the protection fall on here, so it is really nice display. And if I have, well, I cannot easily rewire this because I'm anyway I'm getting messed up with the wiring but if you have this running on the ESP room with the Lovian GFX library 
that uh, the demo is so fast you can even it's, you cannot see it. I mean, there are some comparison videos. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the possibility to make them side by side, but um, you see how much faster. 8-bit parallel connection is than uh, SPI. Obviously, if you're uh, limited by your GPIO pins, then you use SPI, or if it's a TFT module that has only SPI output, you get a slower speed. But anyway, if you're interested, this will be a very, very interesting product that I'm coming up with. Uh, I think I told three people so far and um, it will be more in the future. So anyway, thanks for watching and thank you also for your support, be it via uh, my Banggood affiliate link or you can buy something in my Tindy store. All the links are in the description. You can also, if you like to, buy me a cup of coffee via PayPal or even if you dare to become a Patreon and I will do more videos, I will do more explanations and um, yes, this is it for today. Thanks for watching and take care everybody. Okay, this is just an add-on on the video. I managed to make the Login GFX library work thanks to help of uh, Tobozo um, and as you can see the rounded re rectangle fill is 98 milliseconds and uh, before it was over 300 and all the numbers are actually uh, faster so that's my clock and you can see here how blazing fast the uh, tests go through and um, actually on the room test board um, dev board I actually got the last number down to 92 comma something so it was a touch faster but still this is a uh, three times faster than uh, Bodmer's uh, TFT underscore e, a, e SPI library, so which I'm using with 8 bit as well, of course. So it's the same wiring, nothing changed. And oh, by the way, again, for anybody using the S3 dev kit board or module or whatever, if you assign a wrong pin, or actually in this case, it was the wrong channel number for the PWM signal that the uh, Lovian GFX library uses for backlight, which is not connected, but still, uh, that was the culprit. So, if you have uploaded any code and it's not running, you can check on your serial monitor, and most likely it will be in a rebuild, reboot loop. So it does not start up as soon as we fixed it actually we could left the channel at on channel 7 and uh, change the pin from 36 to 32 and it worked going back to pin number 36 it did not and um, actually the other way around it was 36 32 that did not work with channel number 7 and uh, it worked with channel number 7 on pin 36 and now we reverted it back to pin number 32 and channel number 6 the BMW channel and it works so if you have multiple items of uh, stuff connected to your S3 and all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore check your pin numbers i bet you it's gonna be that so in my project actually i will have also an spi display that will be connected to it among a few other parts 
and uh, that is my next mission to wire up the SPI pin, uh, SPI um, display, and to get it to work together. Uh, actually, in my project, they do not have to work both at the same time, either the big one or the small one, but of course their pin numbers has to be correct. And then I have to connect the uh, I2 square capacitive touch panel over here, my finger over there to this connector to get I2 square working. And that will be the next steps that I'm doing. So, anyway, this is it. Thanks for watching.